Norman Lindsay was an Australian artist, sculptor, novelist, and cartoonist. He was one of the most prolific and popular Australian artists of his generation, attracting both acclaim and controversy for his works, many of which infused the Australian landscape with erotic pagan elements and were considered scandalous at the time. He also created political cartoons for the Bulletin magazine for over 50 years, satirizing Australian politics and culture with his distinctive style and wit. Lindsay was born in Creswick, Victoria, on February 22, 1879, to a surgeon father and a mother who encouraged his artistic talents. He was one of ten siblings. He began to draw for a Melbourne newspaper at the age of 16, and moved to New South Wales in 1901. In addition to his work as a cartoonist and illustrator, he produced numerous paintings, etchings, sculptures and bookplates, often featuring nude figures in classical mythology. Norman Lindsay was fascinated by the idea of a pre-Christian world where sexuality and nature were celebrated without guilt or shame. He believed that Christianity had corrupted the human spirit and imposed artificial moral codes on natural impulses. He expressed his erotic pagan vision in many of his works, such as his paintings, etchings, sculptures and novels, often featuring mythological content. He also wrote a book called Creative Effort, 1920, where he outlined his philosophy of art and life, arguing that the artist should pursue beauty and joy without regard for social conventions or religious dogmas. Lindsay's works were considered scandalous and obscene by many of his contemporaries, who accused him of being anti-Christian, anti-social and degenerate. He faced censorship and legal troubles for some of his publications, such as Red Heap, 1930, which was banned in Australia for its depiction of rural life and sexuality, and Age of Consent, 1935, which was seized by the police for its portrayal of a middle-aged artist's affair with a young girl. He also had a notorious feud with the poet Banjo Patterson, who criticized Lindsay's cartoons as vulgar and immoral. Lindsay's pagan beliefs and eroticism were not only evident in his art but also in his personal life. He was known to have multiple relationships and affairs throughout his existence, embracing his desires and living to the fullest. His home, which he called the Springwood Sanctuary, was a haven for like-minded individuals who shared his passion for art, sensuality, and pagan spirituality. It was here that Lindsay and his circle of friends would gather to discuss art, philosophy, and indulge in their hedonistic pursuits. This unique lifestyle and his unapologetic exploration of eroticism and spirituality in his craft made Norman Lindsay a truly remarkable figure in the world of art. Lindsay was not shy about his erotic pagan beliefs and lifestyle. He had several affairs and relationships with women, some of whom posed for him as models. He was married three times. He also hosted parties and gatherings at his home in Springwood, where he entertained his friends and admirers with his art, stories and opinions. He was known to be charismatic, witty and generous, but also arrogant, stubborn and domineering. One noteworthy anecdote involving Lindsay's erotic pagan beliefs was his encounter with Rosaline Norton, a young artist who was dubbed the Witch of King's Cross for her practice of sex magic and her paintings of erotic gods and goddesses. Norton was a fan of Lindsay's work and sought to meet him in 1949. She visited him at his home and showed him some of her drawings. Lindsay was impressed by her talent and invited her to stay for dinner. They had a lively conversation about art, philosophy and occultism, and Lindsay gave her some advice on how to deal with censorship and criticism. He also asked her to pose nude for him, which she agreed to do. Then, after Lindsay attempted to seduce the young woman, he was rejected by her and out of anger, he ordered her to leave his house. Later the pair put aside their differences and became close friends from then on. A man who wasn't afraid to live life on his own terms, Norman was a renowned artist and a committed pagan. He believed in celebrating life and the changing seasons, and his parties and gatherings were a way of bringing people together in a spirit of joy and creativity. Norman Lindsay's parties were legendary, 
and he spared no expense to make them unforgettable experiences. It is said that at one particular party, Lindsay dressed up as the Greek god of wine, Dionysus, and entertained his guests with performances that included recitations of his poetry and readings from his books. Another time, he built a replica of a medieval castle in his backyard and used it as a setting for one of his renowned gatherings. As a pagan, Lindsay often celebrated the winter and summer solstices, and these events were marked with great fanfare. His parties were marked with elaborate decorations, and guests were encouraged to dress up in costumes that reflected the theme of the celebration. Norman's parties were a testament to his unique outlook on life and his commitment to living life to the fullest. Despite his unconventional lifestyle, Norman's work as an artist was highly acclaimed, and his legacy continues to inspire artists and art lovers today. His parties and gatherings were a reflection of his creativity and his passion for connecting with others in a spirit of joy and community. Notorious for his pagan beliefs, Lindsay's parties were an interesting mix of art, literature, wine, and celebration. He welcomed a diverse range of guests, often interesting artists and writers, and treated each gathering as an opportunity to exchange ideas and collaborate on projects. From dressing up as mythical gods to building castles and decorating his house with seasonal ornaments, every event he hosted was a reflection of his unique outlook on life. One intriguing anecdote from Lindsay's life involves a series of gatherings he hosted at his Springwood Sanctuary. These events, known as Moonlit Revels, were held under the full moon and featured elaborate pagan-inspired rituals. Guests would dress in costumes inspired by mythological figures, and the evenings would be filled with music, dancing, and performances that celebrated the sensual and the divine. These gatherings were a testament to Lindsay's commitment to exploring the connection between eroticism, spirituality, and the natural world. Another fascinating story from Lindsay's life revolves around his creation of a secret room within his home. This hidden chamber, known as the Temple of Pan, was dedicated to the Greek god of nature, fertility, and wild revelry. The room was adorned with Lindsay's most provocative and erotic artworks, as well as various pagan and occult symbols. It was here that Lindsay would retreat to meditate, create, and further explore the depths of his beliefs. Also Lindsay would seduce a number of curious young females at this location. The Temple of Pan was a physical manifestation of Lindsay's passion for the erotic and the spiritual, and it remained a closely guarded secret throughout his life. Many of Lindsay's works could be classed as male sexual fantasies, and one prime example is a watercolor called, Visitants from the Moon, which shows a host of buxom, naked women tumbling out of the sky, to the amazement of a group of men and ladies dressed in frock coats and hoop dresses. Another of his most notorious works was an ink drawing entitled, Polis Verso, which shows a group of lusty pagans giving the thumbs down to the crucified Jesus, which generated a storm of controversy in 1904. Norman Lindsay was a man ahead of his time, unafraid to push boundaries and challenge societal norms. His fascination with eroticism and pagan themes was a significant part of his personal life and artistic expression. Lindsay believed in the power of sensuality and the human body, often incorporating these elements into his art. His works were a celebration of life, love, and the natural world, which he saw as interconnected and divine. This perspective led him to explore themes of sexuality and spirituality in a way that was considered taboo during his time. These anecdotes provide a glimpse into the unique and captivating world of Norman Lindsay. His unapologetic exploration of eroticism, pagan spirituality, and the occult made him a truly remarkable figure in the world of art. He died at his home in Springwood, New South Wales, on November 21, 1969.